offer. So during the session, we will provide an overview of the BB4C or Building Blocks for Change Race Equity Assessment, making sure that we touch on the assessment framework, which undergirds the entire offering. So that will be particularly important. My colleague will cover that. We will also uh, cover a live demo of the BB4C user dashboard. My colleague Cameron will cover that later. And then as I previously referenced, we will hold time for Q&A and I'd offer one more plug or reminder for you to use the feature to get your questions submitted as soon as they come to you. Don't feel the need to hold your questions until the end. And then finally, we'll close out. We'll wrap up, obviously thank folks for their time, but make sure you know how to get in contact with our team should you be interested in learning more about the assessment and uh, if you're interested in having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with my colleague Cameron and I will make sure you know how to request that. Let's shift gears now to the polls. I am going to hand it off to my colleague Cameron to get us started. Thanks Mercedes. So now that we you all know a little bit more about us we're excited to know a little bit more about you. So we've got a series of three poll questions, as Mercedes mentioned. The first question is aimed at understanding which role you most closely identify with. So I will launch the poll. We'll take a second to respond, and then we will share the results. All righty, folks. All right, Cameron, thank you. And thanks for folks being so responsive. We got up to 94% participation in that poll. This again is really helpful to, as Cameron said, help us get our heads around who's joining us in the virtual room. It looks like we have a good splattering, but most folks identifying as uh, being a part of, or being a DEI professional or a capacity builder. So there we have around 44% of you who identify more closely with that role, closely followed by nonprofit employees. So that, that's great, that's, that's right on the money in terms of the intended audience for BB4C. And then we also have some representation uh, by nonprofit intermediary employees or organizations, which is also another intended audience for the Building Blocks for Change Assessment. So it's great to, to get a feel for who's in the room. We'll shift gears now to the next poll question. Awesome. Thanks, Mercedes. Folks, this poll question is aimed um, at understanding or you actually describing your race equity experience. So again, we'll take a few seconds and then we'll share the results. Maybe we're closing that poll. Awesome. All right. Thanks for, again, for your response. I know we, we hit you right out the gate with three polls, but this, again, is very helpful for our team. So based on the results of the poll, you can see the majority of uh, folks I responded to this particular question around race equity experience stating that they help nonprofits advance race equity strategies, which would make sense in light of the response, the majority of the responses coming in previously, either from nonprofit employees or DEI consultants and capacity builders. So it would make sense that, that the group would respond uh, in the way in which you did for this. And then we see this as closely followed by folks who participate in race equity efforts and initiatives within their workplaces, which also makes sense given the contingent we've seen who are identified as nonprofit employees. Cameron, we can advance to the final poll. Absolutely. Alrighty, folks. And the final poll is aimed at understanding your familiarity with BB4C specifically. All right, looks like Cameron is that we got a hundred percent answer. Way to go! This is very helpful. Probably the most helpful of the poll questions that we asked to get a feel for how familiar you folks are with the BB4C assessment. And uh, the I would say it looks like the majority of folks, over sixty-seven percent, know that they are slightly familiar. They either saw an announcement, but have pretty minimal knowledge around the entire offering. So that's that's really good to hear, given that we intend to, as I mentioned earlier, provide that high-level overview and walk you through that demo and then a whole time for, for Q&A. Uh, so thank you for responding to those poll questions and providing my colleague Cameron and I a better sense of who is joining us virtually. I will now hand it over to Cameron to dive right into that BB4C overview. Yeah, thanks, Mercedes. 
Alrighty, folks. So at a high level, building blocks for change is an automated race equity assessment that is designed um, by Building Movement Project to support nonprofits in building what we have identified as the foundational capacities and necessary, um, necessary capacities for fostering equitable and inclusive workplaces for your, for your employees. So the assessment process aims to do that by focusing on what we have identified through three and a half years of research, development, and testing with uh, just around 90 organizations um, to identify what are the most impactful drivers of organizational culture change. So through that research and testing, we have found those to be learning, leadership, conversation, and voice. As you can see, those four capacities um, are, are a major part of our assessment framework. Um, obviously that's important as Mercedes mentioned previously that this framework underpins the entire BB4C process. Another important um, element to hit on this slide is that the four capacities are complemented by uh, three focus areas. And so through the years of research with beta testers, we've identified these three focus areas, um, which are motivation, practice, and structures as an additional lens for analysis. Um, so these capacities, uh, they help us identify the ways in which your organization is demonstrating like motivation around addressing race inequities or exclusion in your organization, as well as better understanding how your organization is actually organizing around these efforts and operationalizing the efforts. So our team is actually able to capture your entire staff's experience and observations um, through these lenses. And then we are able to generate a customized report based off of those staff experiences um, on a, at a high level, it's important to hit here that the, um, the custom report, which is based off of your staff experiences, that is an anonymous survey. We are dedicated to protecting the anonymity of those who participate in the BB4C process. Um, that way, your organization's efforts towards race equity um, and inclusion are, are protecting the, the folks who are participating. Awesome. Holding space for questions. Um, and Mercedes, if I am missing anything, feel free to hop in. Um, but in doing so, I will slide into our assessment process. So our assessment process, you, as you can see, includes three main phases. Phase one, which is the survey taking phase. Phase two, in which your organization will share the findings of your custom report. And then phase three, is where your organization will form an implementation team that will take the recommendations from your custom report and turn those into an action plan to be operationalized by your organization. Um, those three phases, as you can see, um, are wedged between a getting ready phase and an ongoing implementation phase. So the getting ready phase is a phase in which your organization will prepare to launch the assessment. Um, so assembling an assessment team is a part of that phase, um, as well as some other preparatory um, tasks that we like organizations to complete before moving into survey taking. On the other end of, of our spectrum here is the ongoing implementation phase. Um, that's where your organization will co-create that action plan um, and develop a feedback mechanism so the organization can gauge your progress in real time. and holding space for any questions. Um, I know that was very, very brief. And Cameron, if you don't mind, I'll hop in. I'm not yeah. seeing any questions that have come to the chat. I'll just add a little more context around the BB4C assessment process. So as my colleague Cameron mentioned, this is the process that we arrived at at Building Movement Project based on three and a half years of beta testing with around 71 nonprofit organizations. So at the outset of the assessment, I think what was clear to Building Movement Project is that organizations would prepare 
and do ongoing implementation work in addition to some active process phases where they would be launching the assessment via the survey, taking the survey, having discussions internally, engaging in uh, comprehensive meaning making, and then springing into action around the findings and recommendations. But it was through the rigorous testing over the nearly four years that we were able to really hone this process based on organizations' real implementation of this process that we had created at Building Movement Project. So just one thing that's worth noting is because of that, we often have organizations who either move through this process on their own or with the support of a third party consultant or capacity builder that express that they move through these phases in a way that might be different from those that we laid out, which again is tied to our research and our findings that uh, were illuminated through the beta test. And so one thing that I do think is worth noting here, as well as in a few of the subsequent slides that Cameron's going to take us through is that this is the process we recommend you follow. And at the same time, we recommend, recognize that organizations either alone or in, the, in partnership with a consultant might choose to move through these phases in a way that's slightly more customized. There'll be materials and resources that align with each of these phases, but we, recommend, we recognize that there'll be autonomy in the way in which this process is administered throughout uh, the organizations. But again, to Cameron's uh, offer, don't hesitate to lift up questions around this particular part of the process should they come up. And I'm looking in the chat and it looks like Cameron answered the very first question, but keep the questions coming in as they come up because I know it's easy to lose these things. And then, and then again, as a reminder, we'll hold time for Q&A towards the end. Cameron, I'll throw it back to you. Thanks, Mercedes. Awesome, folks. So let's talk about what you can expect from the BB4C process. So I mentioned in the previous um, slide that part of the getting ready phase, that preparatory phase, was assembling your assessment team. That is something that you can expect from this process. So that team is the group of one to three people in your organization who will steward the BB4C process for your employees. Um, we have had organizations as large as 500 employees. We have seen with those organizations that one to three people might not be enough. Um, so this is minimally the, the recommended size of the team. Should you need more people to fill more roles for your team? That's absolutely, that's absolutely fine. Additionally, we have seen through beta testing, organizations take anywhere from around six to nine months to complete this process. Um, to be clear, this is not the survey process. Actually, the survey process we found in beta testing typically takes organizations around three to five weeks. This is the entire BB4C assessment process. And lastly, we have seen through beta testing that organizations, uh, their assessment teams have dedicated around uh, one to 15 hours per week to the BB4C assessment process Something to remind you all here of is that this one to one to 15 hours per week and the six to nine months, that depends on many factors like the size of your organization or the time in which you're participating in BB4C. We've seen some organizations um, take a little bit longer in summer or larger organizations take longer to complete the process. Um, this pace is set by your organization and we are here to support um, support you at whatever pace you need. Awesome folks, not seeing any questions. Oh, perfect, I do, and Mercedes answered that. Thank you so much. Awesome folks, so let's talk about what you get from the BB4C assessment process. As I mentioned, the survey is sort of the, the, the big offering of this. The survey and the custom report um, is what folks really look forward to. But in addition to that, um, under our based cost pricing, organizations will have access to a dashboard, which I will demo here in a few, um, a dashboard that houses a robust library of digital materials that offers support for moving through the BB4C assessment process. Um, the dashboard also grants you access to the BB4C help desk um, and the techn technical support that our team um, provides there. And then lastly, communication. So our team is 
dedicated to ensuring that you receive biweekly communications, encouraging you throughout the process, um, sending you helpful tips and reminders. Um, in addition to weekly, once you move to the survey taking phase, weekly updates on your staff participation. So if you have 12 people participating in your organization, we'll let you know each week how many of those 12 people have completed their BB4C assessment survey. And Mercedes, I know we'll speak to this here as she's speaking to the report, um, but when possible, as you can see here, um, so long as anonymity is not compromised, larger organizations are eligible to receive disaggregated findings. And so on that note, if there are no questions, I will use this as an opportunity to segue to Mercedes, um, who, will, who will walk us through the sample report. Fantastic. Thank you, Cameron. And while I'm preparing to do that, folks, I am dropping into the chat the link to this sample report that I am going to walk us through very quickly, uh, which is also linked and available on the Building Blocks for Change website, which I shared earlier. Cameron, feel free to advance to the very first slide for the report. So as Cameron is moving to that slide, I'll share that this is an example of a fictitious report that is not too dissimilar from what organizations could receive with a couple caveats. Um, and those are exciting caveats, which are that we made some changes and advancements uh, with our ability to further disaggregate the findings on a number of bases. So as that slide deck gets pulled back up, I will move us through, through that. And Cameron, just a heads up, I can't see your screen. I don't see the slides any longer. Oh, sure thing. I will yeah. start sharing. Perfect. They just see us. Perfect. Awesome. Let's see. Right screen. How's that? Perfect. It is pulled up. It is. Actually, it's the report, not the slide. So if you just want to advance to slide 16 in the deck that we're using for the info session, it'll have Absolutely. the cutaway. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just move us through those slides. Otherwise, Perfect. yeah. Perfect. If you want to switch to the slide mode. Fantastic to presentation mode, that is. Thank you. Thank you all for your patience. Hopefully, while Cameron and I were sorting out our tech on the sorting things out on the tech end, if you hadn't had an opportunity um, or if you had an opportunity to, to check out and peruse that sample report, hopefully this will help you as we're moving through this collectively. So I'm going to touch on only a couple pages of that report. You can expect these actual reports, depending on the uh, organization, how, how diverse their data set is, how large the data set is, you can expect this report to be over 30 pages. Again, I'm focusing only on a few of the pages and providing a higher level snapshot. So for this particular page, this is we zeroed right in on how we display the organization's findings. So we start off in the report by orienting you to the actual layout of the report to familiarize you with how we present the findings and recommendations within the report, as well as the demographic information. This particular section provides an overview of the report itself, high level results with uh, demographic information that delves more deeply into the findings. But this page lines up to what we call the overall results by capacity, which lines up to the framework that Cameron covered earlier, that learning leadership conversation and voice framework to first orient folks to how we present the findings in regards to the scale system that really helps them better understand where they are pretty developed as it relates to one of the capacities, as well as identifying those opportunities to build capacity and grow across one or more of the capacities. And you, you can see with this sample, this page from the sample report, this organization is the most developed with their voice capacity and the least developed with the conversation capacity, which tends to line up with our observation. So on this particular page, the organization can get at a very high level their results by capacities and introduce them to the how respondents felt overall their organization was doing. Cameron, we can advance to the next slide. 
if you don't mind. So this particular slide dives deeper into one of those four capacities, and that is learning. So this slide provides a deeper look uh, at, and provides more detail, as well as a further bifurcation of the findings into and across those three focus areas. So you'll recall what, or way back when, it feels like, when my colleague Cameron was orienting us to the assessment framework, she touched on these three focus areas, motivation, practice, and structures, which in short tell us how help us understand and present back to the organization or capacity builder or consultant how uh, everything from how motivated the organization is to advance racial equity and inclusion all the way through to the ways in which they've systemically demonstrated that commitment through their policies, procedures, and ongoing practices within the organization. And so you can see this page layout, Mary's narrative uh, findings with the visual or graphic on the right-hand side of this screen. So you can see we start to map out and show you how we further analyze your respondent data by those three focus areas per capacity. And we use that same scale that you saw on the previous slide. And what you can see here is that within the learning capacity, the organization is the most motivated, and this is consistent with our findings. So there is a desire to implement more equitable and inclusive practices, but you can see the organization is coming in the lowest as it relates to those structures, which also is consistent with what we've seen. Organizations often experience a gap between those aspirations and actual practices across the organization. Cameron, we can advance to the very next slide, which I believe is where we start to further dig into the findings by capacity area. So we pulled it up and out a little bit here. On this page, you see we go one step further and we're, we begin disaggregating those findings where we were looking at averages overall previously. On this slide, you start to see organizations and capacity builders and consultants can gain more insights into what might be a disparate experience by demographic group within the organization or by position uh, and tenure and level within the organization. So this is what I've met earlier by caveat. This slide uh, shows sort of what's included in our base offering, which is where we can begin to disaggregate findings uh, by demographic groups. So that POC stands for persons of color, folks who identify as white. So we're able to draw those comparisons between their average responses, i.e. their experiences. And then we're also able to disaggregate findings on the basis of staff and senior management to see whether or not there is a disparate experience. And let's follow this learning trail. I think learning was the capacity we looked at previously, as you can see, senior management have a much more positive view of the organization's learning capacity. So a different, a positive view, more positive experience, but you can see there's a pretty steep difference between that of folks who identify as staff and not in senior management. And you can see with regard to POC and white, they are pretty close. In fact, you can see, but you do see that slight distinction between folks who identify as persons of color rating the organization and, uh, and responding to the survey uh, in a way that is a little more critical than employees who identify as white. What I will say on this slide before we transition, we are now able to offer even more disaggregation where we are able to dig deeper into staff by position and level within the organization, as well as tenure, um, because that was something that continued to come up through our years of beta testing that organizations wanted to better understand whether or not there were different experiences for folks who were newer to the organization in comparison to folks who had been with the organization for extended periods of time. So let's, and then uh, gender is another uh, area in which we're able to, to disaggregate findings. Let's shift to the next slide, which I think we're drawing to the end of the review of the report. Uh, the next area, the next slide, actually, Cameron, if you want to swing back to the deck. There, thank you. I think we're on the, the slide that breaks down the responses, which I think is this slide. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My eyes are a little shoddy nowadays, but this is good. Hopefully folks are getting the gist of it, maybe not able to read the uh, slide word for word, which is certainly not our intent, just meant to orient you to the way in which we lay out the findings as well as the recommendations. So this particular slide is where we dig deeper and are able to break down the responses uh, by race and ethnicity when possible.
people. Cameron mentioned this a number of times, so I'll drive that point home. We will do so if it doesn't uh, violate our commitment to employee and respondent anonymity, meaning that if you have fewer than five respondents who identify as belonging to any one of the demographic groups, we will not disaggregate your findings. Instead, you will see a star, so or an asterisk, and you can see this particular example. You probably can't see because it's pretty small there, but this cutaway of the report actually shows a number of demographic groups or racial groups where we were not able to disaggregate findings because there were fewer than five employees or survey respondents who responded to the survey and identified as belonging to those groups. But when possible, we are able to get this granular and offer more insight to the organization about how the experience may be even more disproportionate across the organization, depending on what racial group employees identify with. Cameron, let's shift gears to the next slide. And I do, do believe this might be the final one. Sorry, Cameron, if I threw you off there. We, I wanted to lift up just the sort of latter half of the report. So we talked a lot about what is the sort of introductory slides, the demographic slides, and then our presentation of the aggregate findings and disaggregated findings. Then the report shifts into, uh, towards the latter half, our actual recommendations and embedded resources around where organizations might start to activate around those findings. And so this particular page is the part of the moving to action segment of the report that shifts into custom action steps and, and a suggestion around where organizations might begin implementing organizational shifts and changes to allow them to see a less of a gap between their aspirational state and where the employees have assessed they currently are at a baseline. So this includes, excuse me, a little tongue tie, includes links to tips and resources that our team curates. And that report that you have is a little older, so it might have some failed links in it. But this is where organizations uh, both have an opportunity to see some of those uh, resources, this section, as well as the last thing I'll hit is this area of concern. This is the second time in which if an organization does have an area of concern, it would show up for them. And just in short, what we mean by that is these are findings that arise to a certain level, like this particular example where staff report observing or, or experiencing or witnessing discrimination and bias within the organization. We do elevate that for organizations as that may be a key starting place for where to begin to, uh, to implement those organizational shifts and changes that are necessary to pursue equity and inclusion across the nonprofit workspace. Cameron, I do believe that we are shifting now to one more. <laughs> I keep saying that the final page. So Following that learning thread all the way through, if you are you've hung in there with me, uh, this is where you start to see the recommendations and the resources break down even further across that for this particular capacity. Now, this would exist for every capacity in an actual report, not a sample report. But you can see us again lift up the focus area, so motivation through structures, and offer tailored resources and recommendations as a starting point. The one thing I want to share before I hand it off to my colleague, Cameron, to take us into the uh, user dashboard, the BB4C user dashboard, is this. We are very clear, and if you have dialed into the BB4C website, we're really clear about what BB4C is and what it isn't. This process, as we've laid out in front of you, is often supplemented by consultants, by organizations with external, meaning non-BB4C efforts to do, engage, let's say for an example, governance work. If you're interested in better understanding the governance practices to assess the extent to which they are uh, either advancing the organization's equity goals or stymieing in them, that might be an assessment that you supplement with BB4C. If you want to hold staff focus groups or uh, constituent focus groups, that might be another area. If you want to do board engagement, board source or other board assessment tools may be leveraged to help the consultant or the organization get a more comprehensive and full picture. But I think the one thing that we've learned through our beta testing, which included both within organizations, those participating in cohorts, as well as individually, and uh, solo, and 
organizations who were being supported by consultants and capacity builders, we learned that BB4C is very complementary in what may be a larger effort to assess and better understand the current organ the organization organization's current baseline in order to position them to understanding the changes that need to be made to better align where they are now with where they would want to be organizationally in terms of creating a more inclusive and equitable organization. So I just, I, I, I do want to really drive that point home and so that you can really contextualize and appreciate the, the actual offering and what we've chose to include and exclude uh, and how we chose to focus and really tailor this particular, uh, what could be a, a piece in a larger pie. Cameron, let's shift gears now, if you don't mind. I'll hand it off to you to bring us into the BB4C user dashboard demo. Thanks, Mercedes. That. Awesome folks. So welcome to the BB4C dashboard. So at a high level, I just want to answer a couple of questions that we typically get about the dashboard. So what is the dashboard? As I mentioned, the BB4C dashboard houses a robust library of digital materials, which we'll review here in a moment. Um, it offers guidance on how to move through the assessment process, and it houses the BB4C help desk where you can ask process related or technical assistance questions um, to me and my colleague. So I will start by mentioning that we didn't go through the paywall, um, but this is a password protected dashboard. So upon sign up, um, your organization, whoever purchases the assessment will receive the credentials to the BB4C dashboard. So as I move through, I want to highlight some of the key elements of the dashboard, the first being the help desk, which I mentioned. The short form that you could submit, and we are, again, dedicated to timely um, and responsive assistance to that. We are dedicated to making sure that you have assistance within two business days um, of, your, of your initial request. Awesome. So another question that we get from organizations is why is the dashboard important? Well, Building Blocks for Change was intentionally designed to be a self-guided process. So everything that exists on the dashboard uh, serves to support the self-guided nature of the process. Um, so an example of that is when you sign up for the, um, for the assessment process, you will receive your custom survey link. Should you lose that survey or you're not able to find it, we provide guidance here on where you can find that. So that's more of the general um, guidance that the dashboard provides. We also provide here guidance about the materials that I'll walk through here in a moment, about understanding their titles, understanding their the type of document that you're referencing, as well as understanding who is the best user for the document and uh, the way in which the documents are ordered and how the order will support your organization through the BB4C process. Another feature that I like to highlight is that the dashboard is uh, phased based. And what I mean by that is you can see getting ready, that's the first uh, phase, the preparatory phase of the building blocks for change assessment process, you will find all that you need to move through the getting ready phase on this section. As you can see, as you move through the assessment process, you'll have the same sort of support. Awesome folks. So another question is how will the dashboard help your organization's assessment team throughout the assessment process? So the dashboard is designed to help your organization in a number of ways. The first I mentioned is the help desk um, and the helpful tips and reminders. But what's really cool about the dashboard folks is that we actually offer interactive progress tracking. So as your organization 
moves through the steps for preparing for and executing each phase, as well as uh, following up with your organizations before progressing to the next, you'll be able to track your progress in real time and store it here. So should you log out and come back, this will always be here for you. If you have any lingering questions um, about the dashboard or about anything in the BB4C process, we also offer phase-based FAQs. So as you can see, this is the getting ready FAQ section. The, the other phases have the same thing. Again, should you have any lingering questions after reviewing the FAQs, please feel free to direct your questions to the help desk. Now, I'm excited to share some of the materials that we have cultivated over the last three and a half years. So one of the important ones that I will call out is the choosing your assessment team. As I mentioned, choosing your assessment team, which is a group of one to three people minimally who will steward the BB4C process at your organization. We have found that organizations have had a little bit of confusion or just um, are hoping for a little bit of clarity around the roles, who fits best in those roles and what the roles actually will do. We provide in these materials that assistance, that information and additional context. So as you can see here, there are three roles on the assessment team. There's a champion who generates excitement around the, the BB4C process at the organization. The process lead who will shepherd and administer the assessment process for your organization and then facilitators who will organize and lead um, BB4C related meetings at your organization. We've added some additional context here. And in another version that will soon be uh, uploaded to our, to our dashboard, we actually have a breakout of each role, the time commitment for each role and what traits fit best for each role. So organizations have found that that is super helpful as they're moving through the process. Another element that I would like to hit on specifically is that we have found that organizations, um, specifically folks who are sort of serving in a champion role, maybe even before they are participating in BB4C, are looking for um, information to share across their organization or with senior leadership uh, maybe to garner buy-in around the process at their organization. We have a one-pager that champions or whoever at your organization can share with leadership and fellow employees breaking down the process at a glance for you. Another cool material that I'm excited to highlight for us today is a staff outreach email template. So we have seen through beta testing that organizations, once they've purchased the assessment, they're excited to participate. Sometimes they're struggling to even introduce the process to their organization. And we've seen that they're taking a lot of time um, to do that. Our goal is that you are not spending as much time writing emails and introducing folks to the process. Um, our goal is that you're actually engaging in the process. So we've taken some of that um, pressure off of you by creating email templates. And all you have to do is input your organization's information and send that right along. And then you have a team that is informed of and prepared for the BB4C assessment process. Other elements I'll highlight here, folks, is that we have these materials here, but we also offer similar support in, in a video format for folks who, who prefer that, like Mercedes and myself tend to be. Um, and then the last feature that I'll highlight of the dashboard are the reflection questions. So at the end of each phase, your organization will have an opportunity to reflect on um, what really worked for you in this phase or maybe what didn't work and something that we can improve on. Um, to make the next phase maybe more streamlined or more um, effective for your organization. At the end of each phase, you will have the opportunity to answer some reflection questions. 
And those are helpful to us as well. Those are insightful because those help us at BNP uh, better understand where you are in the in the BB4C process. And that helps us to offer tailored support to your organization as you move through. So it's insightful on both sides. Awesome folks. So that is the BB4C dashboard. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A feature. Um, and I will kick it back to Mercedes for some Q&A. Perfect. And before we dive in, so we do have one question queued up. You folks uh, took our recommendation uh, quite well and continue to submit questions through the Q&A feature throughout. So hopefully those responses were satisfactory. Should you still have some follow-up questions on those for folks who did submit and receive a response from myself or Cameron? do feel free to uh, re resubmit or submit a follow-up question through the Q&A. Before we uh, respond to the one question that's there, and then I invite folks to populate it with more um, questions. Again, remember to use the Q&A because the chat has a lot of non-question related uh, messages that are coming in there. So it can be hard to, to find them. So if you want your question answered, I'd encourage you to use the Q&A. Feature. Before we do that, the one thing I want to call out, Cameron, and I was responding to a question, so I surely hope that you did not say this already, um, which is a forthcoming offering uh, connected to what Cameron did show. And Cameron, stop me if you did cover this. So Cameron just walked us through a demo, and thank you, Cameron. Very thorough demo of the digital dashboard that we designed and launched when we launched the assessment on the 19th of January. What our team is hard at work pulling together right now is a companion dashboard that is designed for capacity builders and consultants who are working alongside nonprofit organizations using the Building Blocks for a Change race equity assessment, either as part of a cohort or on an individual one-on-one -on -one basis with a client. And what I mean by that, to be specific, this pro version of that dashboard will include two sections, one area with supplemental tools and resources that complement very well the client version of the dashboard that Cameron just demoed for us, as well as a version of the dashboard that is complementary and supplements the client dashboard for organizations who are participating in a cohort. So one or more organizations going through a cohort peer learning experience uh, that are also all leveraging the BB4C race equity assessment. So that actually brings me to one of the first, the only question that we have right now, maybe we'll get some additional questions um, in the Q&A at the moment, which is with a, a cohort of organizations that have gone through the assessment process? Do you have any benchmarking data as well? So what I will share, and do feel free to submit a follow-up if I don't touch on your question. We get this question around benchmarking a lot. We have to be very careful because this is, in our opinion, data that's a lot different than data that you organizations would simply template typically, excuse me, benchmark against. And so we have a, a slightly different take and stance on this. So the uh, high level answer is we don't offer BB4C benchmarking data at this point, um, just in general for organizations. We are in the process of analyzing and have been for the, the last couple months, analyzing our findings overall for the 71 organizations who participated in the race equity assessment to better understand where they are experiencing strength as it relates to our capacity framework, uh, bright spots, as well as where there may be growth opportunities and room to build out those capacities further in order to offer and lift up those insights for the field of both nonprofit organizations who are also pursuing uh, more equitable and inclusive work environments, as well as consultants who are supporting organizations, and then also funder organizations who are collaborating and supporting organizations through capacity building and also general operation and program investments. So at a at the base at a baseline, the answer is no more generally, and it's it is a little bit of a caveat. Yes, we are going to publish findings uh, more broadly that can be used by organizations to understand what their peer organizations may be experiencing. But to respond to another part of that question that maybe you didn't answer is for organizations that or didn't ask, excuse me, is for consultants who are working with nonprofits in a cohort, we do offer a cohort level report 
just for the consultant that aggregates all of the findings across all organizations. So it doesn't provide benchmarking opportunities per se, but it can be a useful tool and it has been useful for uh, consultants and capacity builders who have used BB4C during our beta testing with consultant, or excuse me, with cohorts. So let me, yes, right. You're you're hitting up, you're, 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 you're hitting the needle on the head. Yeah, we have to build up that data set, yeah, certainly before we can do that. But hopefully that's helpful. So there is a cohort level report that is shared only with the uh, facilitator or convener of the cohort, which is oftentimes shared and discussed during uh, sessions, group sessions amongst participating cohort or organizations participating in the cohort. So that cohort level report can in fact be used strategically in that cohort offering. So let me know if you have a follow-up on that really, really good question. One that we get pretty consistently. I will share most of our beta testing was in the cohort structure. So, you know, a lot of like the, the uh, Cameron mentioned that this, the dashboard and the tool was designed to be used in a, in a manner in which we refer to as self-guided. Most of our testing was actually done with, uh, with organizations participating in cohorts that either we led at the building movement project or we supported with the support of external partners. And then we did a final round of beta testing to make sure this tool could be leveraged on its own in a solo capacity. Let's see if there are any more questions. So we have a couple more minutes left. Let's see if we got we have time for about one or more questions and then we'll shift into wrapping us up and letting you know where you can find our team should you have any questions. Perfect, and I saw a response in the chat that someone will reach out to our team. It's a great question and I'd be more than happy to to answer Cameron and I. And thank you for the message about the Pro Dashboard. Stay tuned for that launch. That is coming really soon. We are uh, in the final stages of building that out. There will be a special information session targeted towards capacity builders who are interested in using the, the uh, BB4C resource with their clients. And so we will make a, a, a splash just to make sure folks know that that complimentary tool and resource is available when it's available in the next, uh, two, I would say, a, a couple months here, if not sooner. Okay, we have another question that did come in. Uh, do you have tools and advice for running? We do. So uh, great question. In addition to in that uh, forthcoming uh, pro dashboard or um, capacity builder uh, targeted dashboard that we will release, there will be resources and tools for how to facilitate the cohorts used specific to the building movement project BB4C framework. So it won't be as general, but we have. we Because we did so much testing in the cohort structure, we've developed a lot of tools and resources. So that will be available and embedded right in that dashboard. So that's a great question. Thank you for that one. Thank you. All right, let's Cameron. Let's uh, let's actually shift gears to to make sure folks know where to find us. I'll first kick off with a a resounding thank you. Thank you for joining us over the lunch hour. It occurs to us that we keep scheduling these monthly information sessions during the lunch. I hope folks were eating. If should you need to nourish your body uh, while you were taking in a lot of information on BB4C. And with that being said, I know that. The, oh, many things can get lost. We experienced more technical difficulties today than we have previously. So thank you for hanging in there. If you have any questions, and we do invite you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Cameron and I, we are uh, ready, willing, and able, and available to meet with you, to follow up on any questions that arose for you throughout this session. And also, I know we had a decent contingent of capacity builders and consultants. If you are interested, you have a an organization who you think this offering might be perfect for, reach out to us. We, we have conversations all the time with consultants who are uh, wanting to better understand and explore the use case and the fit for this assessment with their clients. We're more than happy to, to, to jump on a, a call with you. So we'll make sure that in the follow-up communication that you received for registering and participating in this webinar, that you have the direct link to schedule a conversation with our team should that feel uh, like something you're interested in. So I'll hand it over to Ka Cameron to close us out with any uh, closing thoughts, but thanks again for being here. Thank you so much, Mercedes. Just echoing 
Um, Mercedes Sentiments, thank you all so much for joining us and we hope that you'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation or that we'll hear from you all soon. Thanks yeah. folks.